Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to another great Sunday school. Well, we made it another day in the land of the living. God is good. I'm so excited. Well, I want to bring you greetings from New Way Faith Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, Zion, Illinois, Senior Pastor, Dr. Robert Richards. And I just want to let you know that we are so excited. And I'm, of course, your teacher, Co-Pastor Debbie, passionately known as Yo Mama Debbie. Yes, I just feel so good being able to love on you. I love y'all so much. I just don't know what to do. You make me work, okay? You know that song, you make me want to shout. Well, y'all make me want to work. Every single week, I want to get up and start getting my lesson ready so you will be able to have some good food when it comes down to seeing what the Lord has for you today. Well, we got a good lesson, and I am going to get started. I have my little sweetheart on the line. She's always there for me. Say hello, Latoya. Hello, Latoya. <laughs> That's my little girl. Anyway, she always helps me. She knows I am like nuts. Ah, see, my little Vivian just came on. Hey, girl, you just made my day. And I'm not going to say nobody else's name because you know I call everybody's name at the very end. But sometimes you just got to have a little holler out to somebody sometimes. She's one of our newbies, and I'm so glad. And I love you guys so much. Keep on coming on. Now, before I get started in my prayer, I want to let you know that we always have something we want you to remember that's so important that you must have. It's a comforter. It's everything that you need. So all I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to pray and I'm going to look up and I'm going to see it in the scroll. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're asking you to bless us right now. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Lord, bless everybody under the sound of my voice to be able to get something out of this lesson that will just retain and stay with them for the rest of this week, this month, this year, until you come back for us. Amen. Now I'm looking. Yeah! Y'all know what you got to get in order to make it to heaven. Okay, well, let's get on with our Bible lesson. I want you to share, like, comment, love, hit that notification button, subscribe, whatever you have to do to be notified that your teacher is on the line, Mama Debbie. All right, I want you to grab your Bibles, papers, pencils, notepads, everything you can to take good notes. And I'm going to be calling out the scripture shortly, and we are going to be able to put a little note marker in that so you'll be ready when I come up with the scriptures. I think I'm good, so I'm not going to hold my little girl hostage. Latoya, I love you. Thank you. All right. So, All right. Bye. Bye. I love you. Love you. Okay. Now, that's what you call really having good friends, where they can walk these old folks, see, she young, when they can walk these little old people through these little technical stuff, and then I feel empowered, like, hey, I know what I'm doing, but only when she on the line. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, because some of y'all like me, you don't know nothing about technology. Well, anyway... We're in November 14, 2021. Can you believe that? It just seemed like the beginning of the year had just started. Now we're here. How did we get here so quickly? Well, the subject of our lesson in our cogent lesson, you know, I take two subjects now and tie them together and we get a good meat and we get the best out of both worlds to let us know how we should walk way, walk with the Lord and talk with the Lord and how he can order our steps the Lord is trying to keep everybody ready to receive him when he comes back. I don't want anyone left. I want everybody to go back in the rapture. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the rapture. Remember, I taught you about the end times. Well, it's circling back. And now it looks like some of the lessons are gearing right back to the return of Jesus. So keep your ears open. 
All right. The Kojic lesson says, loving as God's people. That's found, mark this, Matthew, the fifth chapter, 43 through the 48th. Now, I know it's not through the 48th. Just let's say that it's Matthew, the fifth chapter, and I'll give you the actual scriptures as we come to them. The international lesson says, who's in charge? Okay, we know who in charge. It ain't us. Well, God reigns. He is the one that is in charge. And when we think about that, we've got somebody that's on our side that's going to reign forever and ever and ever. And that's our father. Wow. I want to be on his team because there's another one with a, a lot of power and it's Satan. But he's only going to last for a time not forever. And he is going to try to take as many souls with him as he possibly can. Don't let it be you. Now, now I can't say that you don't know. You know, one day you go lay down your life. You don't know the day or the hour when it's going to happen. You don't know he comes as a thief in the night for you and me. We don't know. If I put myself in a position and I say, now, between me and the rest of the people in this line, who going to die first? I couldn't tell you because the one I think would go first, like, oh, there, there's somebody over there, 95, 100 years old. They finna die, and then God take me. Or I might be thinking that, oh, my goodness, I, it's got to be somebody else. And then a little child might think, oh, Mother Rich is going to die because she's 70. Wow, she old right to them. So when you look at it, you don't know. There's long grades, there's short grades. We just know we got to be ready when the Lord comes for us. Now, the Bible truth, let me get into that. Adopting an attitude. This is what I'm talking about. An attitude is what you do, how you feel, how you project yourself. Your attitude of love is Jesus' expectation. He expects us to have an attitude of love, a good attitude, not just one to get all involved and, 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 and have our way. In other words, I'm going to retaliate. Oh, man. You know? <laughs> love no matter what, regardless of hatred coming back to you, you got to love. Some of y'all got to love some old stinking husbands that was just no good, rotten as the core. You still got to love that person. You got to be able to say, God, forgive me for even thinking ill thoughts. Of you will take care of him, but you still got to love that scoundrel. <laughs> did I really call him that idea? Okay, then we want to get into the memory verse. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Okay, I just said that. Now I'm going to the scripture. And the scripture says, and that's Matthew, the fifth chapter, if you didn't believe me, 41st verse, 44th verse. And it says, but I say, who is I? God. He says, love your enemies. And then he had the nerve to say, bless them that curse you curse you. Oh my goodness. Then he had a third one. Do good to them that hate you. I'm going to do good to somebody that hate me. Oh my goodness. God, you laying it on today. But then he got another one in there and he says, oh my God, pray, 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 pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Now they putting you, now they hurting you. Uh, they hurting you now. They pounding on you. They slapping you around. And it said, pray for them that do such things. So he gave us four power things to say. Love, bless, do good, and pray for people we don't even like. <laughs> I can't even believe this, but it's the truth. And we got to go on it because some of you out there, y'all holding so much mess. You want to get even with people so bad you don't even know what to do with yourself. That ye, now we finish with this memory verse, that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. And he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. So we, all, we talked about a lot of unjust people that don't deserve any kind of anything. But God is saying, do good, pray, uh, overcome evil with good, love, 
bless. Oh my God. All the things that's very, very difficult for anybody in their right mind to do. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And I think I told this story before. I was on the street and a man, I must have kind of pulled in front of him. That man got so mad at me, he didn't know what to do. So when he got up to me, he went to cussing me out. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm doing what you told me. Blockhead, I'm not looking to the right or the left. I'm just ignoring him. He cussing. Ah, da, 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 da. Oh, he was going crazy. And I said, I'm ignore him. Well, let me tell you this. I, well, it looked like I got something in there I got to say. Kate waitress, oh, that's nice. Anyway, you know who I'm talking to. Anyway, this man got out his car because I wouldn't listen or look at him while he was cussing at me, reached in his back seat and got a two-by-four about this big, and he threw it at my car and put the biggest dent in the side of my door, and I knew when it hit, it had a dent. Now, all of a sudden, all them words about love, do good, bless, and pray went out the window. I went crazy. Oh, my God. So, Jesus left. That's why mama, my mama told me, Debbie, you ain't saved. You need to repent and start your life over. Okay, because, honey, the devil got in me. <laughs> and I went, that man took off. And I took off behind him. He hadn't been going 90, and I must have been dead 95, almost on him on the side. I was driving like a crazy person. Then the Lord came to me. He said, now, what you going to do when you catch up with him? I'm like, yeah, 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 because I could have had an accident. I could have killed somebody. I could have been killed. The man could have st stopped and shot me and killed me. What was I going to do with this man when I caught up with him? At the clown? But I'm saved, y'all. You know, I'm saved. Now, this wasn't like right now when I'm in my 70s, but I was still older, and I got mad. And then all of a sudden, I had to come back to my senses. I'm talking to somebody out there. Y'all letting the devil trigger you. Don't let him trigger you because God is telling us what to do. We got to do it God's way, not our way. Everything we do, we want to do our way. Well, God is not looking for you to try to... uh. Hey, this is the way, this is me. God said, you must follow him. Let your footsteps be ordered by him, not you. Get self out the way. My goodness, how did I get this far? Look, let me get back to the memory verse. For he maketh the sun uh, uh, shine on the just as well as the unjust. Now, I want to just let you know, in order to be God's children, we must take the low road of humility. You got to be humble. Yes, it will hurt, but you still got to do it anyway. You got to be nice. You got to be humble. You got to be willing to take something. Nobody wants to take anything because it hurts to be nice because people will take advantage of you. You have even have people that say things like, uh, I ain't going to forgive you. You done went to him and said, you know what? If anything I've done to you, would you forgive me? No, I ain't going to forgive you. Now, now you want to slap him. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, the God is trying to tell us we've got to walk a different walk. And it's not going to be easy, easy to do all the things that he told us to. But you got to keep in mind, you got to love, you got to bless, you got to pray, and you must forgive. And don't forget, do good. For all these things that they're doing to us. How can we do that? But he said, great is your reward in heaven. Now, what is our lesson name? By the end of this lesson, we will discuss. We're going to make a discussion. Jesus' teachings concerning loving and praying for our enemy. He just won't let it go, will it? He just keep coming back with more and more. Love your enemy. Why? Because most of us can't stand our enemy. We get in the room with somebody and we just can't wait to get out. We don't want to look at them. We get in a grocery store. If they go down this aisle and we notice somebody, we go down that aisle just to keep from facing them, to say hello. That's pride. It's all built up in you. That's hatred. That's evil. That's because you have not totally surrendered yourself to the Lord Jesus. It's something still there that got to go. Love hides a multitude of sin. So no matter what somebody do, if you love them, you just kind of let it flow over. You say, God, take it. Don't let me hold any illness in my heart for that person. 
Why would Jesus want us to do such a thing? I told someone to be nice to a person that was hurting them. Their reply was, maybe you need to be telling that to them. They the one got the problem. Well, is that you? If somebody, if you hear a message or something, and it seems like it's going out, and somebody say like, well, yeah, I guess, you know, that's hitting us. No, it might be hitting you, but it ain't hitting me. Yes, it was. Turn the searchlight on you. Quit figuring out how God's supposed to deliver somebody else when he should be delivering you. It's not me that needs to hear this, and it's never you. It's never Never you that's supposed to hear it. I didn't think that what I was hearing, I was supposed to hear. But my mama made it plain. Debbie, Debbie, I love you enough to die and leave you a letter and tell you, you ain't saved. The nerve of my mama. I gave my knees. Nah, honey, I'm so glad I had a mama like that because she was bad, bad. So I got little nephews out there, Jermaine McElveen, raise that boy up so tall it ain't funny. You think about Johnny and all them that all raised up in there. That little lady had an impact on them. You know why? Because they on the line today. Oh, not to say my little one, Delia. Boy, mama had an impact. Thank you, mama. I'm against good and save, mama. You hear that? <laughs> then we're going to consider the relationship between loving our enemies and being a child of God. And Jesus would love his enemies no matter what. He would make excuse for their terrible behaviors. He decided to pray daily for his enemies. When you pray, you Think about this. When you pray for those that are doing you evil, it frees you. It frees you, your spirit, your heart, your mental mind. You are holding your own self hostage to sit up there and hate on somebody. Forget them. I ain't going to let you hold me hostage. So I'm going to have a happy, happy, happy day. Honey, I'm going to be happy because I ain't going to let you get your little grips in me and make me get all bound down where I'm all tight and stuff. I'm free because I'm going to try to love you. I don't care what you do to me. And when we do that, we please God. Jesus said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Not Debbie's. It's mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. So you, people think, oh, well, because I'm not doing anything to them, they're going to get away with it. I don't think so. Because when God finished with them, he is letting them know that now you know what you did to that person. You... Getting a good whooping, I'm telling you. And this is what kills me when I hear people say, God don't get you. Now, you need to sit yourself down. God said, if you wish evil on a person, even if they're deserving of it, he will turn it away from them just so you don't get the glory out of it. He ain't going to whoop somebody for you to be over in the corner. About, yeah, look what God did it. Because he'll turn it right back on you. You got to be careful for all that foolishness you're doing. Quit hating on folks and let God do it. Love them in spite of it all. Just like he said. Now tying in how loving those that have wronged us connects us to reigning with Jesus forever. Forever and ever and ever. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. The first, This is in our International lessons that's talking about that the Lord reigns forever and ever. Our God reigns. He is God Almighty. We will be in the number that no man can number. Do you know, understand what that means? Being in the number that no man can number? That means that we're going to be counted among the saints that have lived holy over the years. And we will be there. John, the writer in the book of Revelation, called him John the Beloved. He was taken up in the heavens. And God showed him what would happen down here on earth. And oh my goodness, we're in for it. All of these different prophecies that have been prophesied over the years are now coming to pass. And we can see it with our own eyes. Only way you can't see that everything is coming to pass. You don't read your Bible. So I'm going to tell you something. Don't go to scrambling looking for a Bible and trying to figure it out later. You better figure out that exactly what's happening in this world today ain't no accident. Everything is going crazy. Crazy. 
And I mean, we accepting stuff that God said it's unacceptable. It's God's way or no way. So he said, I've had enough. This is Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm coming back. And punishment and wrath is coming with me. So you've got to get out of his way. That means you've got to get your soul right and get on board. Don't be left here at the last ending of the game and lose. You don't want that to happen. He talks about all the plays and the wrath in the six seals that are unfolding daily. All of these seals had wrath, 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 the wrath of God. And then the seventh seal, you're going to see where we're going to be rejoicing because we made it. You going to make it. I'm going to make it because we are not going to be fooled by Satan. We're not going to let him trick us. Right now, you're receiving some powerful food that's going to take you to where you need to be when Jesus makes his return. And when we think about this is tying into us today, we are living in the end seals, the seventh seal where we're going to be rejoicing. Right now, those six seals are going on. I'm telling you a little bit about the end times. Death makes room for life. You're seeing people are dying one after the other after the other. You've seen how the COVID just wiped out multitudes because they had to go. There was a way they had to get out of here. But I wasn't in that number. You weren't in that number. You were spared. That's something to give God the glory for. You still got another chance to get it right. Everybody else that then left and went on to be wherever they are. You know what? They chance is over. They'll never have it again. The Bible said it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment, when we die in Christ, though, we are born again. You got your bachelor of arts degree, your BA born again. <laughs> Got that? When people die physically, God may let another uh, be born to take their place. So some of us, we just got to move out the way. What will their life be like? You may just see a pretty little baby, but don't be fooled. He or she has a soul and one day will stand before God. Train your children up. Train them up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Some of y'all on this line today, you had mothers and grandmothers and fathers and People in your family or, or that you met from somewhere that have led you to Jesus Christ. And the thing about it, you learn the way. And this is what is going to happen in that day. You're not going to be able to get away with anything because it's going to be molded down in your heart. You know, the Bible said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. This is why it's so important that we put the word, write it on the tablets of their hearts. Teach your children. Otherwise, you will wake up one day, they'll be grown, and you didn't put enough Jesus in them. What are you going to do then? I don't care if they resist you. Hate me now. Love me later. That's what I used to tell my daughter when I was tearing her up. Yeah, you gonna get her. Tear you up. Hate me now. Love me later. <laughs> well, I'm sure she was hating on me real good back then. But guess what now? She on the line. So she must still be loving me. All that whooping I tore her up. Anyway, let me get... <laughs> yeah, I know you're listening. And... Just think about this. These opportunities come and we don't want to be lost. What will their lives be like? What would you have molded in them? These babies will grow up. And for you older folks, come on, y'all ain't getting out of nothing. Time won't make you saved. It may even make you backslide. So you like, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to get saved one day. Man, don't you understand? You getting older and older. You ain't got saved yet. Oh, one day I'm going to get saved. You knucklehead. Time going to snatch you out of here. But you keep on going. So time won't make you get saved. It could actually make you backslide or be lost. Look at Hezekiah. He, he was saved. He was a good person. And he begged God. He said, give me, give me some more years, God. Don't let me die right now. God said, Hezekiah, for your good life, I'm going to give you more years. He added 15 more years to that man's life. And guess what? He backslid. 
Oh, that just, oh, God, take me now if that's going to happen. If I'm asked for more time and then go and lose my soul, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. So the thing about it, you got to ask yourself, what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your time right now? Are you giving it to the Lord? Are you getting your yourself in order to meet the kings of kings and the Lord of lords? Are you getting yourself in that position? John now sees the seventh angel sounding his trumpet and a great voice happens and responds to the sound of the angel and how those will be rewarded. There's going to be reward for us in heaven. One day we're going to close our eyes and open up our eyes and be in the midst, in the presence of almighty Jesus Christ who laid down his life for us. He suffered and died. He took all the criticism, the pain and the spit on and the ridicule and the whippings and tearing his flesh out and the nailing of his feet to the cross and the nailing of his hands to the cross. He hung there until he died. But then one day he rose on the third day morning for you and me. And we have now a right to the tree of life for what he did. What greater love? Who can do something like this? Only our God. And he's offering that to me and you. Have we accepted it? Or are we ignoring him? Are we embarrassed of him? Do we want to keep him on a down low and don't tell nobody much about him? Because we're a little bit embarrassed. Embarrassed, he said. If you be ashamed to own him before men out there, he will be ashamed to own you before his father, which is in heaven. That's a scary thing. Don't let God have to not own you because you would own him. What make you say, I'm a little embarrassed. I want to talk about God. Well, honey, everywhere I go, smile, Jesus, love you. And I get turned down, rejected all the time. Who cares? So what? My daughter said, I remember I was uh, with her when she was having, well, I don't know, second or third, baby. It didn't uh, matter. But she said, Mom, what you quit passing out them Jesus car? Because we got in a wheelchair and I'm trying to push a wheelchair up in the up thing uh, where we were going, you know, at the hospital. And honey, she went off on me talking about not now. Well, of course she was in labor. <laughs> Anyway, but the thing about it, you can't stop telling people about the Lord. Don't be ashamed of them, no matter what. When I was getting my eye operated, I took Jesus cards in, <laughs> in the surgery room and I passed it out to everybody. I said, before y'all put me under, smile, Jesus love you for you, for you, for you and you. They was like, this woman is crazy. But no, I wasn't crazy, honey. I was sending up my timbers. All right. John now sees the se uh, seventh angel, and we're going on down. Time to get ready, everybody. Some things are going to happen prior to this seventh angel coming down on the scene because after the seventh angel, we're going to be rejoicing because we made it. There's going to be activities in heaven. Things are going to be going on. Did you just hear about that there's like a, a, a asteroid coming towards the earth again? Well, one day it ain't going to miss. Boom! What is it going to do when it hit the earth? There's a big, big, big thing, big as a Ferris wheel. They say that probably detached from the moon and it's falling towards earth. You know what? We've been blessed. It didn't get us yet. But one day, boom! Because you know what? Honestly, as much as I've been reading, I just can't see uh, United States uh, being found in the end time. So I don't know what that means. Well, the way we going now, we might be invaded by any country and come in and take us over. And we don't exist as America anymore. The great land may be the non-existent land. But anyway, all I can tell you that things are going to be to falling from the heavens. There will be a tremendous activity, lightning, voices, earthquakes, and thunder, great hail, size of boulders. Oh my goodness. And the ark of the testimony is inside the temple in heaven. All of this is going to be going on. It's going on now. Everything is in preparation for the Lord to make his return. In Revelation, the 10th chapter was given a little, John was given this little book in his hand. Now, this was all this vision that the Lord said, come up hither. Let me show you, John, on what's to come. And so now I'm telling you what happened there. And this little book he put in his hand and he said, eat the book. 
Oh, he trying to eat it. Mm, it tastes pretty good. Mm, no, no, that's pretty good. It's sweet. It's tasty. But when it got down in his stomach, oh, God, this hurts. Oh, it was so painful. It was so bitter. It was so horrible. It was good going down, but it... Okay, I'm back. I don't know what happened, but my whole scream went off. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Well, see, I'm doing pretty good. I got my screen back. Anyway, I want to just let you know that bottom line, John was told you must prophesy again to many people, nations, tongues, and kings, and men. You're going to have to prophesy. You're going to have to tell people about the Lord. You must live so you can witness to people. That means you can't be walking all sideways and slew-footed and all this kind of stuff. You got to walk in the way of the Lord. And now I know how come that thing popped on because the devil did not want me to say what I was saying. Oh my God. Oh, it ended. Uh-oh. My life ended.